I'm going to take you through Affinity Photo's user interface, explain the concept of personas and studios, and show you where all the main tools are that you will need to start editing. Let's start with the document view, or what we may call the canvas. This is where your current document will be displayed. And if you have multiple documents open, they will form a tab group near the top here. By default, the view tool is selected and you can click drag to pan around your document. You can zoom in and out using shortcut keys. So Command-1 on Mac, Control-1 on Windows will give you 100% zoom. Then Command-0 on Mac or Control-0 on Windows will fit to screen. Alternatively, with a mouse, you can hold Option on Mac or Control on Windows and rock the mouse wheel up and down to zoom in and out, respectively. Another trick is to simply hold the middle mouse wheel in and then move it up or down to zoom as well. So no keyboard modifiers are required for this. And I'll just do a fit to screen using Command-0 on Mac. On the left here, we have the Tools panel, which contains all of our raster editing tools. So we have the Crop tool, various selection tools, Flood Fill and Gradient tools, Brush tools, Retouching tools, Quick Shapes, Text tools, and more. Now some tools are in tool groups, denoted by a small icon in the bottom right here. To access these tool groups, you can left click and hold, then release the mouse button over the tool you wish to select. Alternatively, you can double click, or if you prefer, you can precision click on the small icon. Now, notice that when you have a tool selected, you lose your ability to pan around the document by click dragging, since you would be applying that tool instead. So there are several methods you can employ. One is to hold spacebar to temporarily switch to the view tool. Then you can click drag to pan. Another is to hold down the middle mouse button and drag. And finally, you can use H on the keyboard to switch back to the view tool. Like when holding down spacebar, this has the benefit of removing any construction elements from the canvas, such as the brush nozzle, so you are free to pan and zoom around your image with no distractions. Now, let's look at the top toolbar. On the far left, we have the personas. We will come back to these in detail. Next, we have various functions that are suited to Affinity Photo. Each Affinity app has a top toolbar with different options. In Photo, we have operations like auto corrections, selection options, quick masking, snapping options, then geometry and layer options. Now we come to this collection of panels on the right hand side, which we collectively refer to as a studio. By default, Photo comes with quite a lean and uncluttered layout. So you have your essentials for image editing and compositing, like a layers panel, histogram, brushes panel, undo history down here, channels panel, and color panel for sampling and creating color values. The app comes with additional functionality, of course, and you can access that by going to view and studio. And here we can enable various additional panels. For example, if you come from a video editing background, you might prefer using scopes to a histogram, in which case you can enable the scope panel and then toggle through the view options. If you want to record a macro to speed up your workflow, you might want to enable the macro panel. Or if you want to use existing macros that you have created yourself or downloaded and installed, you can enable the library panel. Both of these panels open on the left hand side within what we call the left studio. You can easily float panels by click dragging their label, and you can dock them again by offering them to an existing panel's label or the bottom of that panel if you want to split the studio vertically. It's easy to customize your workspace layout how you see fit. Then you can save it 
using Studio presets. For more information on this feature, there is a dedicated tutorial you can watch. For now, I will reset this studio to its default layout. Now I will quickly point out the top menu. This is where you will find the majority of Affinity Photo's functionality available in menu form. For example, under the File menu, you can run specific merge operations like panorama stitching and HDR merging, and you can of course save your document or export it to another format. Under the Document menu, you can resize and resample your document, flatten the entire layer stack, and rotate your document or flip it. Under the Layer menu, you can add new adjustment layers, live filter layers, and you can also merge or rasterize layers. The Select menu lets you invert existing selections, create selections from layers, perform selections based on attributes like tonal range or color range, and also refine an existing selection. Then, as we've already seen, we have the View menu, where you can also access various managers, which may be helpful depending on your workflow. Finally, we also have the Help menu, which gives you access to several support options, including a built-in offline help, which is searchable. OK, let's move on to Personas. Now, think of Personas as different workspaces for different tasks. The main persona is the photo persona. This contains all of the main functionality you will need for image editing, and you will likely spend most of your time in this persona. I'll just move over to another document to demonstrate the Liquify persona, which is next. Now you can only enter the Liquify persona if you have a pixel layer currently selected on your layers panel. Let's jump into that persona now. So this gives you an entire workspace dedicated to mesh distortion operations. Notice my tools on the tools panel are completely different, as are the studio panels on the right. And you can immediately start pushing pixels around on your document using whichever tools are required. Then once you are finished, you can either apply your liquify operations or discard them. Whichever option you choose, you will be taken back to the photo persona. Let's move on to the develop persona. And for this, I will move across to this raw file I've opened up. Opening raw files in Affinity Photo will immediately bring you to the develop persona, which gives you a straightforward layout of adjustments on the right hand side to develop your initial image with such as tonal adjustments, lens corrections, sharpening and noise reduction, and further tone controls. And then we also have some retouching tools on the left-hand side. For this example, I might just go back to the basic panel quickly, just boost the shadow detail slightly, add some clarity, increase the brightness and contrast, and then click develop at which point my raw image is now developed and ready for further editing in the main photo persona. However, there is a little trick with the develop persona. You can actually enter it through any valid pixel layer on your document. So even though this is not a raw file, I can select the bottom background pixel layer, which is the base image, and just move across to the develop persona here. Now I can use all the same intuitive controls. And this is a great option for anyone who does not necessarily want to engage with the layer-based editing approach that the main photo persona offers. Do bear in mind that anything you do in develop is destructive, which means you cannot change the settings later. If I just show you by clicking develop, they are effectively baked into the pixel layer once applied. This may be fine, however, if you simply want to bring an image in, make a few adjustments, and then save it back out. Let's move on to the tone mapping persona. So, this persona is mainly intended for HDR merge documents and 32-bit HDR renders, anything where you have an extended brightness range that cannot be shown by a normal display. Here, for example, I have a 32-bit render in OpenEXR format. 
and it has some brightness values that far exceed maximum white of standard dynamic range. With the correct pixel layer selected, I can just move across to the tone mapping persona. Now this calculates how to map those brightness values into standard dynamic range. Then it provides us with two tone mapping methods over here to achieve this. So tone compression and local contrast. We can experiment to find a suitable balance. And we also have a number of other controls similar to the develop persona. So we can do further tonal work at the same time. There are also a number of presets to choose from on the left hand presets panel. And we have some categories up here that we can explore. To apply a preset, simply click on the thumbnail. And this way, you can very quickly cycle between them until you find a result that you like. And don't forget, you can always tweak that preset using your own custom settings. Once you are happy with the result, just click apply to move back to the photo persona. Finally, let's look at the export persona. Just before we move on though, I will point out that to export your work, you can use file and export, which will allow you to export the entire document to various formats. The export persona is only required if you want to achieve finer control over exporting regions or specific layers of your document. So here I have my composition made up of multiple layers in my layer stack. Let's move across to the export persona. Now by default, we have the slice tool selected here. This allows us to draw out slices or regions within our document. And we can then export those slices separately. So across on the slices panel here, you'll see those three slices I have just created. And we could shift click to select them all and change the export format using the preset drop down here if we wanted to. However, I will delete these slices and instead move back to the layers panel. Instead of drawing slices out, I can create them from the bounds of existing layers. So I can shift click and select these four asteroid layers, then create slices from them using this option here. Back on the slices panel, I could keep the export format as PNG since it supports alpha channels, then uncheck the main deep space comet slice, since this is the entire document, which we don't want to export just now. Now I can click export slices and just create a folder on the desktop quickly to export these slices to. Now, once the export has completed, we can see these individual slices of the document as PNG files. Back in the export persona, once we have defined an export directory, we can now check continuous down here, and that will continuously re-export these slices as we perform further work on the document. And there we go, a detailed look at Affinity Photo's user interface, exploring the tools, studios, and personas. Don't forget to check out the wide variety of other tutorials that are available as they focus on specific features or tools. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.